Okay, good evening, everyone. Today, Lauren Carlucci is going to be presenting Sex Differences in the Association of Body Composition and Cardiovascular Mortality, which was published in the Journal of the American Heart Association. Uh, and while she starts doing that, I'm actually going to look up what the, um, what the impact factor is for that journal, because I would think that it's fairly high. Um, and I think if, if you read this, which you should have done, uh, it's pretty interesting, but it's also very, very short. Um, and if you read it, you'll probably be surprised. But uh, Lauren, go ahead and take it away. Okay. So they were investigating the relationship between body composition and cardiovascular disease deaths. They looked at previous national health and nutrition examination surveys and body composition from three survey cycles it included around 12,000 people, and they were over 20 years old. The indexes they used were fat max ind index and uh, muscle mass index. And they divided people into four categories, low muscle mass, low fat mass, low muscle, high fat, high muscle, low fat, and high muscle, high fat. They hypothesized that the relative CVD mortality um, import of fat and muscle mass may be different in women compared to men. And their goal was to find an answer so that they could develop sex appropriate guidelines with respect to exercise and nutrition as a pre preventative strategies against um, the development of CVD. So they, in here, you can see all the factors that they took into place um, in trying to understand the effect of total fat and cardiovascular risk. They assessed the effect of two adisposed tissue deposits. Trunk fat uh, includes both subcutaneous and visceral fat in the abdomen which has been associated with cardiovascular risk, but it has shown that trunk fat estimated by DXA has greater correlation with total abdomen, ab, yeah, abdomen fat than visceral fat. Lauren, uh, try to go forward and then back to this slide because it's, now it's doing it again. Oh, there we go. Now you're good. Um, and, and can you... Can you give us a definition for trunk fat and for, I guess later on they'll say leg fat, so it might be good to give us that too. Thanks. Um, I think it's just subcutaneous and visceral fat in the abdomen. Right, I think. That's all they said. Yes, I think I think that's right. Did you say that? I'm sorry, maybe I didn't hear yeah. you say that. Yes, yeah. So I'm sorry, that's right. So really, just when they say trunk, they mean torso. Yeah. Um, but just torso below the thorax, so below the rib cage. So this table shows the baseline characteristics that they looked at, and it shows that the highest number of CVD mortality were low fat and low muscle. And then three different models were fit in men and women based on the chart and the different variables. And that's just a BMI chart for reference. Uh, again, go forward one and come back to it. There you go. Can, can you go back to the BMI for a second um, and just show the, the main characteristics. So, so it, a 20 uh, the number right the body mass index number really is relative to your height so that a 25 uh which is means your borderline in the healthy zone a 25 is very different between someone who is four foot ten and say five foot ten for four foot ten that'd be 120 pounds, but five foot ten, you'd be a 25 at. Of course, I picked one that doesn't have a 25. Somewhere around uh, 175. 
So so 25, th that number, what it does is it it regularize uh, it re it nor regularizes it normalizes across heights so that it can apply to all people. So it's pretty useful. And if I could make one more point too, that's kind of weird. How many of you have heard that the BMI is bad because it doesn't adjust for muscle mass? Some of you, because it turns out that even even though it doesn't account for muscle mass, just being heavier because of muscle can actually also seem, at least the, the previous data would say that it would increase your risk of cardiovascular incident or disease. Now go ahead, Lauren, because then it gets a little more confusing. So this chart plots the CVD mortality incidence over time by body composition group. Again, for forward one slide and then back. I don't know why it keeps doing this. There you go. It shows that for women, it's more beneficial to have high muscle, high fat. But in men, there's no benefit for high muscle, high fat over low muscle, low fat. So it's basically just proving that women have different like circumstances than men. So it's like new information that they didn't know before. Can you can you show us line by line what each? I know there's a key there, but but actually kind of demonstrate the difference for us. So like the least risk would be the high muscle, low fat groups in both men and women, but then in men. The low muscle, low fat, and high muscle, high fat are basically the same. But in women, high muscle, high fat have a lower risk than low muscle, low fat. And then in both groups, the low muscle, high fat were the highest risk. And then table two, uh, shows the different models and this one is showing women and they adjusted the um, groups and models so that I think this one is um, it takes into account menopause and age and it shows according to the p-value um, that's a that age race and diabetes are a risk factor And then this shows for men that the high muscle, low fat group has the lowest p-value and is the lowest risk. Actually, can you go back to table two and show us why, why you're saying that? Uh, oh, it's doing the thing again. So one more and then come back to it. There you go. So what are we looking at, though? Like, what's what tells us that? Uh, the p-value. And so if in order for it to be considered interesting, that p-value has to be what? Less than 0.05. Right. So if we're looking, it's like table two. Model one is using four covariates. Those covariates are body composition, race, cancer, and age. Wait, and smoking. That's a really poorly designed table, huh? Body composition, age, smoking, that's three, race, and cancer is five. Four covariates with that thing. Ah, that's okay. Does that, Miss Lift? Does that is that what they're doing? Am I? I honestly well, can't make out their table. Like I, I, I can't so understand hard. it. What I would have done if this was my table is I would have see where it says low muscle, low fat up at the top. That's part of a subcategory. It is a subcategory of a larger category, which is body composition. So I would have put. Those four 
under body, like indented so that you knew they were part of body composition. Then I went ahead age where it is then smoking where it is then race. But the two, but the four subcategories of race would have been indented again and cancer would have been where it is because yeah. Well, again, I think that's, and then with the, the menopause and all that as other right. categories, right? Well, yeah. So they're only using menopause as the fifth category covariate. Wait, so this is adjusted competing risk for mortality with women over 20 years of age from that population. What are they? So I'm, I'm just trying to, who's, who said they were in stats, Caitlin and, and Riley? Have you guys done covariates yes, yet? I'm having trouble talking. I might be having a stroke. It, have you guys done covariates yet? Or other people who've taken stats? I really don't know if we've done them yet. Oh. I'm sure we have. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if you have, because basic statistics probably wouldn't... It's, it's a little more complicated than basic statistics. I think it means that in order to be a covariate, you already have to have a variate. So that would be the first variate. And then you have four covariates means five. And that would make sense given what we have. And then in model two, you have whatever that first thing is. And then four and then five covariates, which includes menopause. So this table, table two. Well, then model three is... 10 total covariates is that what it's that's, that's what it's saying? saying yeah so so let's add let's see so then hdl is another one so that's six total cholesterol seven log uh, 10. Log, uh c reactive protein the the c reactive protein squared no hypertension and then diabetes and that's it so so there that is a poorly poorly designed like you guys, I know that you think that a lot of you think that it's kind of, that we, we are beating a dead horse and we're talking about how to design a figure, how to design a table. But when you are trying to understand the world and you have a you have a table like this that could have been very small changes would have made a huge impact on its readability, right? And I can't you can't read it. Hold on, before I crucify them, let me just look at I mean, formatting is a huge thing. So they've gone so far as to gray oh. out the titles. Hold on. Hold on. And so I, I, just as I said, I was like, before I crucify them, let me make sure it was their fault. It's not their fault. This is how it was on the website. This is the American, this is the American Heart Association's fault. If you look at here, I'll actually bring it up. If you look at the actual paper, they did exactly what I said. Age and then indented. Sex, indented. So the PDF version is is a much better version, and and Lauren, you actually had the PDF version, and I removed it because it didn't. I didn't think that it was clear enough. So, shame on me. I'm sorry. Um, this is much clearer. Can I don't know if you guys can see my screen, but but there's they actually have the categories in a different uh, color with the p values for the categories. So like table one is demographics. Table two, yeah, so they it's close. They did indent though. So let's count body composition, age, smoking, race and ethnicity, cancer. That's five. Okay. Add menopause, that's six. And then and then for model three, you're adding. HDL, total cholesterol, CRP, hypertension, and diabetes, but I'm not really sure. Yeah. I don't know. And so what you're looking at is this, um, what you're looking at are the these p-values to see what's less than 0.05, which would mean it's significant. So like, Lauren, go to figure three. Like, there you go. Yeah. So this one's in men and notice it's missing model two because men in general don't have menopause, but I don't judge. So, you know, like if one of you guys thinks, you know, that you want to experience menopause, 
in your lived experience, who am I to judge you? I can't. You know? It's your thing. Menopause is fun, I hear. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So, so in this one, and oh, let me switch out of this. Uh, so in figure, th in table three, it's much more clear cut, right? Lauren, you there? Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Go to table four. Go ahead, pick up where you, where you left off, where I interrupted you. So table four is just showing the different types of fat and the type of fat and where it is on the body plays a role in the risk factor. And then... Oh, go back, go back, go back. I just want to stare at it for a moment. It's, it's not rendering. Click, click forward and back again. There you go. Um, so this is, they essentially made a new unit up, which was trunk fat divided total trunk fat. Total trunk, no, that's a confusing. Let's just say trunk fat, whatever that is, divided by the person's BMI squared for some reason. Why? Why is it squared? Why is it squared? Anybody know why it's squared? Why is it squared? Methods, supplementary material. I hope you guys are looking so that you can help me with this. Why is it squared? Okay, so if you if you do a search for the word squared in the paper, it only shows up in the tables and never in the text to explain why they did that, unless I'm mistaken. Anybody else find it? There's no, I don't, I am not a good enough. When I read it. What'd you say? I didn't see anything about it when I read through the paper. I'm not a good enough statistician to know why they would have done that. And that kind of bothers me. Like I'm supposed to just take them at their word. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. If you square it. Okay, here's another question for you stats people. First of all, who teaches stats? That's Pop, right? Dr. Pop? Yeah. Did Dr. Pop ever talk to you guys about normalizing data? Yes, we did do that. And did you do it by squaring it? Normally, I think we took... I don't think we did it that much, but normally I thought it was taking the log of something. Log, yeah, log is the one. Squared. Yeah, log is how you would usually do it, but sometimes that doesn't work. And I think squaring it sometimes works. So maybe that's why they, because why would you, if you're trying to normalize data, why would you do that? Here's a question for anybody who is recently in AP or honors biology. Why would you care about normal data? I think that's the answer. I think that's why they're doing it. Why would that matter? 
もクリンクロック。現在の後あるね。Come on, some of you have to remember why normal data matters. Why would you need normal data? Does it like you run a different statistical test? Right, exactly. Which ones would you be able to run? Do you remember? I think it was the Cusco Wallace. Yeah, yeah, yeah.、Uh, no, not the Cusco Wallace. That's if it's abnormal, right? But, but you'd want to run a parametric test. And, and if you're doing a multivariate analysis, which is what they're doing, I could be wrong. But I'm pretty sure it has to be. I, I'm pretty sure a multivariate analysis is a normal test. And one way to figure that out is, is if they use means. Did they? Did they use means? It looks like they're using. What's HR? HR. Hazard ratio. Hazard ratio. What the heck's that? What's hazard ratio? I, I'm just going to draw on.、Um, I wrote a paper with my brother six or seven years ago. He's a statistician. He's a professor at George Washington. He was a professor at Columbia at the time. Had, and、uh, so we wrote this paper together. And I remember him talking about multivariate analysis and having to do normalization. And if the log didn't work, try squaring it. I think that might be the reason. And I'm pretty sure multivariate needs to be normal data. I think, I'm pretty sure it's a parametric test. I mean, we could, we could probably. That's usually, though, written somewhere, and that that's how they've decided to normalize because that's an unusual way of normalizing. Yeah, they should have, yeah. They should have said something, yeah. And I'm not seeing it anywhere, but again, I don't, I don't know. I think there was, there was a little bit of a.、Um, They made some assumptions about the, the reader's knowledge of stats and things that I don't think were. If I were editing it or if I were the reviewer, I would ask them. It wouldn't be something I'd necessarily reject them over, but I would ask them, could you at least clarify why you did that? I, I know maybe I'm being stupid because I'm not a statistician, but Presumably, with something that's really stats based, you'd have at least one really good statistician reviewing the paper. Okay, go ahead, Lauren. So, the results basically showed that in women, high muscle, high fat mass was associated with a significantly lower adjusted CVD mortality rate, but high muscle, low fat was not. And in men, both high muscle, high fat, and high muscle, low fat were associated with lower CVD. And this emphasizes the importance of public health messages to increase activity and improve muscle mass rather than focus on weight loss. All right, so when I read that, it really blew my mind. Like I'm reading it wrong. Lauren, can you go back to the figure, figure one? So, again, if we're orienting to this, the x axis is what? The time, the months. Yeah. So, 192 months, we divided that. That's 16 years. This is a long study. That's a lot of people, too. It's like 10,000 people.、Um, the top graph is females, the bottom graph is males. And what, and what is the y axis? Death or survival? Anybody, shout it out. What is death, that? Right? Because it's、yeah. mortality rate. Death.、Uh, Jordan, 
when you were reading Alec Davidson's paper about, I'm putting you on the spot here, but I think you'll remember what I'm talking about, about shifting mice every couple weeks, you shift them like six hours or something, right? And they were like, they were dying. Remember that? Do you remember, you don't remember that paper? So, so shifting, doing shift work, being constantly shifted actually reduces your lifespan in humans as well. But we draw it different. We don't draw it as mortality rate on the y-axis. We usually draw it as survival rate. So what you see is that the here's the x-axis and the line the line is going across and then starts to decline as things die. Here, as things die, it's a mortality rate, so it's actually going up. Right? Does that make sense? And so what you want to be, what is good, meaning long life. I mean, some of you may think short life is good. I don't know. Like, again, I have, I brought up Larry the Cable Guy earlier today. I don't know if you've ever heard Larry the Cable Guy, but he makes this joke about his dad about, you know, people say you shouldn't eat bacon with everything. And I say they should shut their mouths because my daddy lived a happy 56 years. And it was, you know, that was it. Um, so if that's your idea of happiness, but a lot of people want to live a long time. So if you want to live a long time, you want this the line that is the lowest, which would be high muscle, low fat in males. High muscle, low fat in females. Low muscle, high muscle, low fat. High muscle, high fat. Low muscle, low fat. Low muscle, low fat. So, so in this, if you're just, if you, if you looked at nothing else in the paper and just figure one, is the conclusion the same as what Lauren just said? Laura, go back to your conclusion again. Higher muscle mass is associated with lower CVD and mortality in men and women. However, in women, high fat, regardless of muscle mass, high fat appears to be associated with lower. High fat appears to be associated with lower risk. All right, now go back. High fat appears to be associated with lower risk. Uh, click again, trying to high fat. High fat. No, I don't think. High fat. No, I don't think that's right, Lauren. Yeah, but it is what they that's said. Right. Yeah. That, is, that is what they said. But, they're, but they're, their data are not showing that. That's what blew my mind. I'm like, but the data don't show that. Why are they saying that? Quick aside, AP environmental folks, what sort of curve do you see that has an increasing mortality as, a, as opposed to an increasing survivability that we just covered? Just had it in your last test. And if you're an enviro and you don't know the answer to that, you must hate the planet and therefore straight to hell. Your LD50 curves, I mean, those are all increasing mortality as opposed to increasing survivability. Lauren, go back to your conclusion again. So on page seven of the study, it says, the current study shows that a high muscle mass is associated with lower cardiovascular mortality. And in both sexes, higher fat levels. 
Yeah, so I think that I think that might be a typo, Lauren. I think it should be high muscle, regardless of fat appears, because it says, okay. and in both sexes, higher fat levels were associated with a higher mortality, right? With either high muscle or low muscle, it didn't matter. Okay, that makes me feel better, because like I just was talking about this with my uh, anatomy and physiology group. I misread it too, uh, Lauren. So it's not completely like. I, I misread it too, so I'm, I'm at fault also. Um, but I was just talking to my A and P people about it, and you know, there is this. <clears throat> there was, of course, um, many a long part of the 20th century to do fat shaming, and if you can step back from that for a moment, we'll just look at it historically and evolutionary. That's kind of stupid because until the 20th century, people who who we consider overweight now were considered the most beautiful because that meant that they had lots of resources. So it's not something you really thought about consciously. It was a subconscious thing. You see somebody who's, who is what we would now classify as overweight instead told them, Oh, he must have a lot of, or she must have a lot of resources and therefore must be rich and somebody I want to mate with because they have more to offer my children. And only in the 20th century, when you have, more people who can actually get uh, valuable nutrition, appreciable nutrition, so more people are getting fatter, does it become more trendy and fashionable to not be, right? And really, especially in the 20s, the roaring 20s with flappers and stuff were really the beginning of this. Um, there's this great thing from, uh, who is it? I think Huffington Post did it many years, it was, must have been like seven years ago, did this um, body type through the century or through the centuries, starts in Egypt because it really didn't change much until the 20th century. And then it was pretty much every decade, there was a new, a new body type that was considered the ideal. But regardless of the history, we, we have data from the last 30, 40 years that having a higher um, BMI does lead to cardiovascular risk. So when when Lauren and I misread this as saying that the that higher fat in women was lower, that lowered the risk. That was that kind of blew my mind. But I am I reading this right now? It does say muscle, not fat. Muscle's the most important thing you can have. Is that fair? Anybody? Yeah. So why is it an important study? Because they, they make a claim about why it's significant, and I don't get it. I think it's just um, so that, like, when they send out health messages to people and they're, like, telling, giving people guidelines on how to uh, decrease their risk, they kind of are general about it, and they don't, like, split it up into men and women and they were seeing how like they could split it up more. And they should be less focused on weight loss and more focused on fat loss. Is that fair? Because muscle mass is good no matter what. The other thing was that, I mean, if you look at that figure, Go back to the fit. Go back to the figure. This is another another. I'm beating. I know I'm beating a dead horse about the way that these things should be done. But the whole point of doing this in a journal club is that you get to see other people make mistakes, so you don't do it. Correct me if I'm wrong, and uh, Miss Lift, this this you two to correct me if I'm wrong. But is the point of this graph of figure one to be able to compare men and women? Is that the point of this? No. It's not. You think you think it's only to go with it, not intersex, but intrasexual co uh, comparison, and that's it. Because if they're making conclusions about one sex or over the other, that means there is intersex conclusions. They're 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 comparing sexes. Can anybody look at those graphs and tell me? 
what what is devastatingly wrong. I would reject the paper for this, okay? What is so wrong about these graphs? And I really would like my honors biology kids, the four of you, to be the ones who yell this out because I know I talked about it with you guys. What is wrong with these two graphs? Oh my God, now that I'm now- There's nothing indicating a significant difference. Yeah, you know, that's that's a good point. I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> that that's a good point. Um, you there is there are ways to do that, but that's not that's okay because you can say that in the figure legend. What I'm talking about is is a problem in the construction of the graph. There's something wrong with it that is so bad I would reject the paper. The y axis are different scales. Exactly. That is one of the most misleading things you can do when presenting data is to change the y-axis to serve your purposes. There is no reason since they make so so I, I don't know miss uh oh low battery. Um, if you are doing intersex comparisons between males and females, I really think that those lines should be on the same graph, not split between the excuse me between the sexes. You're welcome to disagree, Miss Liv, if you think that that's, what do you think? I don't think they're honestly trying to compare between the sexes. I think they're making a differentiation between the two. So I don't think they should be on the same graph at all. I do think they should have the same axis scales. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I guess that's fair. As long as, long as the axes are the same, because because later on they do go and they make claims about perceived differences but imagine what this would look have looked like like um lauren stop sharing your screen for a moment i'm gonna, I'm gonna do something let's go to slides okay i'm gonna get rid of myself here all right so we're, we're looking back at at lauren's slide here on my computer and if you're if you are going to draw them on the same on the same, I'm going to actually do this. I'm going to go line, let's do a line. Um, then, all right, yeah. So if I wanted to draw this again, I would start here, and let's say I want to draw the the woman uh, with uh, low muscle, high fat. That's where the line goes. Right? And so if you're looking at this, what can you conclude about the intersex comparison? Inter meaning between them. Intra means within. What can you conclude about that? Is it the same? Are men and women the same? Men have higher mortality rates? Yeah, like a lot. I mean, that is tw twice as much. I think I actually drew this. I did, I, I think I drew the line wrong. I think the line's actually supposed to be more like that. Yeah, no, no, I'm still wrong, wait. I'm using the box. The box will actually fix it. There you go. Boom. That's where the line should be. So the worst, the the least healthy women, the most cardiovascularly unfit, look at that adverb, the most unfit are the ones who are um, <clears throat> most unfit are the ones that are male by a lot so a male with low muscle low fat and high muscle high fat are essentially equal to the worst um the least healthy woman do you see that So it's almost like B 
being female is protective to begin with. I mean, is this honestly shocking to anybody? To be perfectly honest, is this shocking? Now it's not. No, but when I when when I had misread it originally, yeah, it was shocking because it said that just high fat was actually protective. That was how I, Lauren and I misread it, um, and then it was real shocking. Yeah, because that goes against everything that we've ever learned. But okay, so Lauren, I'm gonna now get off, Lauren. They, they say in their discussion that these findings help elucidate the role of body composition as a potential causative factor in the sex differences in cardiovascular mentality. Does it? I feel like not significantly. It is the first to... Our study is is of significance, of significance, that's a passive way to say that. Our study is of significance because it is the first to evaluate the effect of, on cardiovascular mortality of specific components of body composition in healthy individuals using data from DXA scanning. Given that DXA scans are considered to be the gold standard for assessment of body composition. What's DXA? What is that? DXA. Whole body DXA exams were obtained from QDR fan beam densitometer following procedures recommended by the manufacturer. I guess it's just a, a scan of some sort for visceral fat. It says it's a dual energy x ray um, absorptiometry. Yeah, absor absor absorbitometry, I believe. Yeah, that's, yeah. So how much of the x-ray? So denser, denser tissues like bone really absorb a lot of the x-rays. And so it, so it exposes the film in back of it, except where it was absorbed. How could that be true, though? It's 2021. This paper is in 2021. And like Ms. Lift just said, it's not, it's really not surprising. And, and how has nobody else looked at that? Anybody else up on the literature on um, cardiovascular mortality and body composition? Anybody? Okay, let's, let's, let's go really risque and talk about society for a moment. And then I'll let you go. What if... Do these data support a claim that biological sex is not real? And remember, if you answer this question, there's likelihood that you'll get canceled in college. So. You're on. You're you're being recorded. I, I won't get canceled in college because I'm not in college anymore. Do you know where I'm going with this? This it's funny. This is a, this was a similar conversation I was having in anatomy and physiology because we're we're about to do metabolism and endocrinology. And um, one of the students made the comment that you can be attracted to whoever you want to be attracted to, except that once you get to college, you'll learn that that's not necessarily what people think anymore. <laughs> See, you're not allowed to be attracted to whoever you're attracted to. You, you must be attracted to me or else you'll be canceled. You know, that's kind of what how college is now. So be careful. Be careful. But if that's also, you know, there's, what, there's this movement that I am vehemently opposed to, that biological sex is not a real thing. And yet, paper after paper after paper is showing that there, there are differences in the programming and the execution of that programming in the different sexes. And this is one of those examples, right? Obviously, from these data, there must be a difference between males and females because the, the least healthy female is still health, as healthy or healthier than, than the middle-of-the-road male. 
a lot of that's hormonal and hormones are produced based on, you know, biological sex. So now does that have anything to do with gender? Liberal people. Campbell, does that have anything to do with? No. Your, I knew you wanted to answer. I just, I saw the eyes and I was like, I, it took want. me a second to think. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, I, so, so like when I was at Swarthmore, no, it has nothing to do with it. That's what you're taught. But, you know, keep, that's what you're taught in college nowadays. 20, 30 years ago, 30 years ago. No, absolutely not. That's not, that wouldn't be taught. It's like, if you're male, you're, you're a man. If you're female, you're, you're a woman. And then, and then, you know, since then it's been changing. And, and let me just make an argument about why it's important because this, because like Lauren was claiming that this is, that this is important because you, when you are doing outreach or, uh, how did you put it, Lauren? Uh, the reason that you thought this was important? I guess just when like public messages are made about, um, decreasing the risks so like just the general public. So and and I think when you originally said you said you said based on your sex, right? I mean, yeah. you can't do that if there is no such thing as biological sex. In fact, you're doing a great injustice to one of the sexes if you're all if you're lumping everybody together. Um so just my piece of, my piece of mind. Okay? Um good job. 